Hello everyone. Um, hello from the University of Western Australia. I'm going to give you a brief overview of our migration. Um, also discuss a bit of the research uptake, what kind of limitations we found and, your, and um, data monitor. So with our migration from deep space to pure, we did have some use bulk uploading at the time by the XML. There were um, non-matching fields and uh, the XML couldn't handle the attached data set files. Um, and we also, uh, because we only had 136 records, we ended up doing this manually and minting DOIs for, for them. Um, we also had to create a crosswalk uh, to map over to uh, Research Data Australia. Now, Research Data Australia is something um, that was created. It's a, by the Australian uh, Research Data Commons, the ARDC, and um, it's a platform where they, it's, it, it allows you to discover data sets uh, within institutions at UW, at, in, within it. Um, so that we solved with a crosswalk and we're still using that. Um, in 2017, we actually migrated our data across and uh, in 2018, uh, we had a big uptake by our researchers who added ne nearly 200 data sets for us. That was a big uptake. In 2019, we had a drop, perhaps because of publishers rec recommending their preferred data repositories. Um, and for this reason, this year, because of that drop, we decided to move forward with locating and adding externally um, published data sets to our repository that were affiliated with UWA researchers. We have identified a few issues, um, which I encourage you to vote on. Um, this is a platform where we have Elsevier's undivided attention, so it's a bit cheeky of me, but overall, we're pretty happy with the data set module. Um, I've already mentioned the OAI issue, but I think this may have changed recently, but I haven't really had a look at it because we haven't needed to. Um, the first major issue is the inaccurate data set downloads in our reporting module. Our current data set download report suggests that um, records upload about 40, have been downloaded 43,000 times, um, but in Google Analytics, um, it just says that they're, they've been downloaded 58 times. Um, we, this is still in development, of course, but we would like to add metrics to the data sets, um, just as there are in this example with theses. Um, we're also hoping to enable automated DOI minting of pure data sets because that works really well. Um, our only issue, we've got the, create, the, the connections made, but our only issue is that the DOI that's being generated within Pure uh, uses the UUID of the record and that's tacked onto the end of our DOI prefix. And you can see um, there that it's over 35 characters long. Uh, now that we're importing data set records published externally, we really need to be able to check for duplicates that exist in Pure. Um, and we can't check for these duplicates without with data sets um, as we can with other research outputs. So that would be a really useful improvement. Um, we'd like to improve the citation which is generated in the portal. As you can see here, each data set file um, that exists per record is tacked onto the end of the citation in yellow. And in this example, you can see how cumbersome this can look when there are several files associated with a data set. And we also would like the ability to copy author lists from research outputs, especially if those author lists are really long. Um, and that just makes it easier for us to create data set records. It would also be useful to have a file size appear next to the data set file on the portal, just so that people who are downloading it know, it, know how big the file is. And um, another issue is the licensing field. So when you upload a 
a file to a record in, in the data set module, you're then asked um, what licence you want to associate with it. But we have managed to integrate um, an external store to our pure system and we would our large data sets sit on this external store because they're much bigger than two gigabyte limit. And we'd like to be able to have a field in Pure where we can assign a license for these large data sets. Um, in the last week, I noticed that there's been a lot of movement um, from Elsevier with this next issue. So um, hopefully that'll be addressed soon. This final issue I'll return to later, but um, I, I, it's in regards to data monitor. Um, but yeah, that's really the only other issue we have with data sets at the moment. In 2020, we began um, scouring for externally published data sets in well-known data repositories that were affiliated with UWA publications. Now we tried using both API queries and manually searching the repository websites. Um, we were then able to pull out reports to visualize um, which repositories faculties preferred to publish in. So we fed that back to our li our li liaison librarians and that could be really useful when discussing um, data set deposits with um, researchers in their discussions. We did find, however, that this labour intensive searching and uh, record, record creation wasn't really effective use of, it wasn't an effective use of our time. Um, so, especially in this current environment. So we decided to test out data search, now data monitor, and have found that this uh, service located s several hundred of UWA affiliated data sets. So we were very pleased and um, we're very happy with data monitor. And it was very easy to implement. This is a screenshot of um, just how easy it was to implement, switching on all of those um, criteria, all of those um, buttons there allowed us to locate even more UWA affiliated data sets. We've ironed out a few of the issues that we initially had with data monitor importing, but there is just this one that's, um, that's still existing. So the importer finds data that um, needs updating and um, yeah, that, that um, just needs to be fixed. An error um, appears in the record and um, we can't update these data set fields. Another issue is that when we import a record and it's validated, you can't update certain fields such as creator or data made available from these um, imported records. So we've just been working around this by um, recreating these records. But as I said, overall, we're very happy with the pure data sets and we look forward to addressing any, all these issues to improve our experience. That's, that's great, Katina. Thanks for sharing that. Um, it, it sounds like you've had a great experience with using the data sets and you've come across a few um, more items that need to be addressed. Um, yeah, we see them as opportunities, Christine. <laughs> um, uh, I, I take it you're using Pure to store the smaller size data sets and then an external repository for storing the larger ones? Yes, our, our um, in, institutional research data store, we're using that for the large data sets um, and we're linking to them from within links in Pure. So we've got a few workarounds for that as well. And yeah, it, researchers are finding it more useful. I mean, today we had a 160 gigabyte data set that they wanted to upload. So we're just working Thanks. with them. Thanks, yeah. Katina. I'm sorry we've run up against the time. Um, thank you very no much worries. for your efforts and your presentation. It was really interesting about the data sets. Time's up and we have to move on to the next presentation. Thank you. Thank you.